Zoom H8 and a handheld recorder with a stereo microphone and try to listen. It's incredible. My portable photo blind in at Barts Lake District uh, because here uh, usually there are uh, some birds. Uh, maybe you already have seen a previous video of mine about this place. Maybe uh, if you didn't uh, see it, you can uh, you can watch it clicking in the link above. just done a small test in low light uh, condition to see how is the track system and some shot uh, I think it was a 3200 uh, ISO value and I, I used the real time tracking system and I made some short clips so you can evaluate uh, you can see how is the, the result but after I'm going to make some other test with a better light because so far the light is pretty bad today it's overcast okay sorry but now I have to use my GoPro for recording myself because the CVE 10 is mounted on the 600 mm lens so far the ZV E10 is not so bad okay the, the worst thing for me is the, the viewfinder it doesn't have a viewfinder and for me it's a really bad aspect for, for a camera okay I know this is a broad camera uh, so for many it's not useful if uh, there was uh, it would be better even because I don't see really well so using the viewfinder is better for me instead of to use the screen of the camera But this is my fault, my my problem. Okay, some nice clip of the little Gerber, I think is good. And they are uh, passing, uh, not so often, but sometimes they are passing in front of the photo blind. And they are really cute. Instead of, of the goods, they are quite They are not awful, but of course, comparing to other birds, more nice, like the little egret. Anyway, speaking about this uh, this vlog camera, I think uh, it's valid for for a short moment uh, when you want to go uh, more far. Uh, with your lens, maybe you don't have a teleconverter, but I'm going to use just to see how it works with this camera. But I think there won't be any problem uh, anyway. Uh, when you need to reach a more far place, the uh, crop factor of the sense of this camera is good, it's an advantage. Uh, of course, you pay off a bit of, um, of image quality and I think in uh, low light uh, condition uh, so far I'm using auto ISO in this camera with the maximum value of uh, 3200 of, of ISO because I don't want to to risk more 
and you get more uh, more noise uh, than in post production I fix it uh, basically this camera has all more or less all, all features that you need to um, to use as a wildlife camera yes why not okay, you can take uh, pictures you can film uh, clips and it doesn't have the limit of 30 minutes that many cameras have the image quality of the sensor is pretty good and the resolution as well they are 24 megapixel of the resolution I think it's enough for any purpose and even if you want to print uh, some picture with uh, this uh, resolution uh, you can print uh, an, an A3 size, picture size without any problem ok, and now I'm going to use the teleconverter 1.4 uh, teleconverter of course with the teleconverter the minimum diaphragm is F9 but uh, with the Sony A9 it should be the same of course the difference is it's pretty visible using the teleconverter of course uh, because uh, as a focal length now I am at 840 millimeters but uh, you have to consider that there is the crop factor of the sensor so you need to add another 1.4 Okay, with the teleconverter and the crop factor of the sensor, I got 11 and 17, 11, 17 millimeters as focal length. It's huge. Okay, uh, I think I, I have quite a lot of material uh, to make a judgment uh, of this camera in uh, wildlife uh, photography. So, um, see you later. Here we go, welcome in my office. I'm in my house where I'm going to analyze this new camera, the Sony ZV E10, as a wildlife camera. At Barrett's Lake, I think I've taken um, quite a material in terms uh, in term of videos and pictures, just to have a good idea. The ZV E10 is one of the last cameras by Sony, fought mainly for vloggers. The main feature of this uh, vlog camera are the bookie button. Uh, for blurring uh, the background, the product uh, showcase uh, button that permit you focus an object in foreground and many other good features. Anyway, during the photo section, uh, uh, during the photo session, I expressed some thoughts about the camera, but now I want to analyze the wide wildlife uh, feature of the ZV10, maybe compared to another camera more voted uh, for wildlife and pretty similar. I mean the Sony Alpha 6400. In this, in this uh, first part of the test, I used the um, ZV-10 with the Sony 2600 G lens, where I took some picture and some short clips. I used the following settings, 64mm as a focal length, f6.3, aperture priority mode, and the continuous uh, shooting as drive mode, high plus, so at 11 fps max. But of course it depends on the light. I also auto from um, uh, 132 uh, 00 as maximum value and the shutter speed uh, was variable. Of course I've been choosing the aperture priority mode. For the videos um, I've chosen the 4K 25p resolution. At the beginning I preferred not using the teleconverter so I had uh, basically a total focal length of 900 millimeters, not 8, uh, 840 millimeters, as I said during the photo session, due to the crop factor of the sensor. But I remind you, it's a PC, so with a crop factor of 1.5 per. The first clip I've, uh, I've been taken when there was few light and some photo as well. So in some situation, I had some blur picture just because the shutter speed was too low. Anyway, when I got the right condition, the image quality was good. Okay, let's see uh, some clips and some pictures. In these cases, the video quality is pretty good and there wasn't so much a difference between the Sony ZV10 and the Sony Alpha 9. And now let's see it together. 
now let's go to see some picture and continuous shooting. In this sequence it's clear that the blur issue due to the low shutter speed. But these others are good and despite the high ISO value the CV10 managed quite well the luminance noise. Now let's see the second part of the test when I used the 1.4 teleconverter. In this case I got 1260 60 mm of focal length at f9, a really really good value in wildlife photography, considering that I could use the autofocus of the camera. At that focal length, fortunately I, the light was better and I managed to take quite a lot of pictures, mostly using the continuous shooting. In this clip the quality is always good, even with these far seagulls. You have to consider that uh, they were really far, more than 300 meters far. But with stills, the, shit, the situation isn't good. Why? The reason is straightforward. I didn't use the remote control, and I could, but I simply forgotten to use it. So this picture is a bit blue, due to the pressing of the shutter button. And as you know, it's always better to use a remote control just to avoid to shake the camera. So in my opinion, this vlog camera, despite its water for vloggers, is also suitable for wildlife photography. As you had seen, the numbers of the ZV-10 are remarkable. 24 megapixel, 4 key videos, 11 FPS of continuous shooting, animal focus in still and video as well, and finally a touch screen where you can set the uh, tracking focus object. So what do you want more? I think nothing, mostly consider the price, yes, about uh, 700 euros for the body and uh, 850 euros with the kit lens, quite good, 1750mm uh, lens. Now I want to compare this camera with its bigger sister, the Sony Alpha 6400. Uh, As you can see, there aren't big differences, more or less they are equivalent, even though the Alpha 6400 has better numbers. Like for example, the bigger ISO range and the electronic viewfinder. But for me, there are other features to consider, like the usability and the responsiveness. Where I have to say the ZV10 is quite good. Of course, it isn't like the Sony Alpha 9, but has a superb AF system. But it allowed me to take easily this picture. This picture of these small birds flying fastly above the surface of the lake. It was like a rocket, but the Alpha Knight followed it really, really well and I managed to achieve that result using the viewfinder. So, as, as I said, for me the viewfinder is essential in wildlife photography. Despite both fact, the Sony uh, ZV-10 has shown a remarkable responsiveness, even though it's not a thought to be an action camera. During the photo session, I couldn't test every setting, but I can say that the most interesting uh, there are the electronic shutter, no, no click sound but it's really annoying, the real time tracking system, it's pretty, it's not as the same as the Sony and Alpha 9, but pretty good, and a fairly good image and video quality. So to summarize, these are my pros and cons. Pros, sensor resolution, responsiveness, the electronic shutter, a real-time tracking system, a good uh, AF in low light uh, condition, and the price. The cons are, it's too small, okay, no viewfinder, and only a few buttons. Okay guys, I think it's all. Of course I might analyze better every aspect of this ZV-10, but uh, sorry, I prefer to stay in nature. For sure, I'll keep it on to use it in wildlife photography as well, when I need a longer focal length due to the crop factor of the sensor and when there will be good light conditions. Okay, now it's time to say goodbye. I hope you've been useful uh, with this short test and I want to thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think about it and I hope to see you really, really soon. Bye bye.